Hi and welcome to WEH Videos. My name is Skip and this is part four on my series on VFR flight planning, the navigational log. This is the updated version. And we left off last time where we just finished calculating our indicated airspeed at 104 knots. And now what we're going to do is get our wind correction angle. All right, so what we have here at Calusa when we got the report was 090 at 7 and 20 degrees C. So once again, we're back at the pilot operating handbook and we're going to look at time, fuel, and distance to climb. And we're going to use these numbers here and then make an adjustment for reality because we are not going to be at 2,300 pounds. And we are, we are taking off, right? We are climbing from Calusa, which is about 40 feet, so basically we're going to call that sea level, and we're going to work our way up to our 5,500 feet. So we have to figure out, well, what's an average pressure altitude for this climb? And let's just go with 2,000, somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 be a good average, and the speeds are the same here, 72 indicated airspeed. So if we have 72 indicated airspeed, we can determine our calibrated airspeed. So let's move over here to calibrated airspeed. And fortunately for us, we can see that at 70, it's 70, and 80, it's 80. So calibrated airspeed and indicated airspeed are going to be the same. So now we can break out the E6B and figure out our true airspeed for our climb out. So we're going to do this the same way we did before. We're going to take our pressure altitude, and we decided, oh, 2,000 is a good average for this climb out. So we rotate here, and we have 0 to 5,000. So here's 2,000, and we've got 10, 20, because we got our 20 degrees C here, right? So let's put our 20 degrees over the 2,000. That's looking really good right there. And now we rotate this around, and we're going to work the other way around. We're going to find our calibrated airspeed down here. And we said it was 72. So we come up 72, and we look up here, and we have 70 and 80, 72. This looks like 76 knots. So that's going to be our true airspeed according to those numbers there. But that's not reality. We're going to be a little higher than that. So I'm going to guess we're going to be closer to 79, 80, or maybe a little more. So between 75 and 80 knots would be a pretty good number, I'm thinking. All right, using the E6B to find ground speed, wind correction, and heading is really pretty simple. So we're just going to follow the directions. But first, let me explain a little bit. On this portion, we have this center line that represents our true course. These lines going off in this direction represent degrees left and degrees right. So we have 5 degrees left, 10 degrees left, 5 degrees right, 10 degrees right. These lines going up, these thicker lines going this way, represent speed. So we have 150 knots, 160, 170 knots. So now we're just going to follow the directions on the E6B. And what do they say? It says, rotate wind direction to under the true index. So we're going to get the true index here. And our wind direction, 0, 9, 0, it's 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this and put the 0, 9, 0 underneath the true index. What's next? mark wind speed up from the center hole. All right, so let's move this up. Here's the center hole. So what you normally do here is you take this center hole or this little grommet and we're going to put it on one of these lines going this way. This represents the speeds, right? But now we're going to use it to represent something else. So we're going to put that little grommet right on the 100. That's very popular. And now we're going to get our speed. Seven knots. And we're going to mark that on this. So we go about five, six, seven. Looks like seven is right about there. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it sticks out. So we're not going to be super accurate. All right, so now we have true index, zero, nine, zero. 
What's next? Rotate true course to under true index. All right, so our true course, one, nine, or five. So now we're going to rotate our little dial here to one, nine, or five. What's next? Move slide to put wind dot over true air speed. All right, so they want us to put the little dot over the true air speed. And so here's 90 knots, 80 knots, 70 knots. And our true air speed, I decided, ought to be 77. We calculated 75 to 80 knots, so I picked a number in between. True air speed, 77 knots. So we're going to put the, our little dot down here on 77. See if I can do that. All right, here we are at 77 knots. What's next? Read ground speed under center hole. All right, so here's our center hole. We can read the ground speed. That, to me, looks like 78. So our ground speed is 78 knots. What's next? Read wind correction angle under the wind dot. All right, well, here's our dot. And so our angle is over here five degrees to the left. So our wind correction angle is minus five, making our true heading one, nine, or five. Now that wasn't too bad, was it? So let's go ahead and put that information in there. We have a true course with a wind correction of minus five degrees, making our true heading one, nine, or zero. In our ground speed, 78 knots. So now we need to correct for the east-west variations. What is that? Well, we're correcting for true north and magnetic north. Unfortunately, they're not the same. And we do that on our sectional chart here. You see this line, this magenta line here? This is an isogonic line. And it's got a number right here, 14 degrees east. So if it's east, you subtract. If it's west, you add. So for us, we have 14 degrees east. We need to subtract 14 degrees from our true heading. So we're going to go minus 14. And that's going to give us a magnetic heading of 1 seven six but we need to make corrections for deviations and this is unique to each airplane what you will find usually on your compass or near your compass is a little chart that may look something like this and it's going to say for magnetic north you're going to steer zero for magnetic heading of three zero they want you to steer two seven because of interference with radios or whatever problem the airplane has. And this is unique to each airplane. So we have these different settings for each one. For magnetic south, you hear 180. So it's great there, but for a heading of 210, you should fly a heading of 212. Again, this is unique for your airplane, and you will find that on the compass or near the compass. But X-plane doesn't have that. So we're going to put a zero there. And so now we subtract that from our 176, and we have, aha, guess what? Compass heading of 176. So now we're going to march over here, and we're going to put 176. That's the course we're going to fly to go from Calusa to the Williams Vortac. So now we need to determine our estimated time in route. So what we can do is we can get our pilot handbook here, and we can look at these numbers and do some guessing. Okay, between two and 4,000, it's going to take us four to six to eight minutes. I got a better idea. We already know our ground speed is 78, and we're going seven miles. So we can determine that off of these numbers. And we can do that a couple of ways. First, let's take a look at the E6B. So with the E6B, we're just going to follow their instructions. It says, 
set miles per hour in knots over the little pointer. All right, well, let's do that. So here's the pointer in our miles per hour. Remember, we calculated ground speed 78 knots. We're going to rotate that and put this right underneath 78 knots. So here we have 78 knots and the pointer. What's next? Well, all we have to do is read the outer scale, and that'll give us distance and inner scale time. So, distance over time. So we're going to come over here. This is where you have to use your head a little bit with the E6B. 7 has to represent our 7 miles. And then we come down here, and we're going to get minutes. Not 50, not 500, not 50 seconds. You have to use your a little common sense here. So when we come down here from the 70, we're right about here. So that would be 5 minutes, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We'll call that 0.4 minutes. So the E6B calculates 5.4 minutes for this little flight. Another way to do this is with your calculator. So we can take our 7 miles and divide that by our speed, 78. And then we're going to multiply that times 60. And that's going to give us 5.38 minutes. So now we want to get the seconds. So let's take the 5 out, minus 5. And then we're going to multiply that times 60. And it gives us 23. So this little flight here, done with a calculator, is 5 minutes and 23 seconds. Now. Remember with the E6B, it gave us a 0.4, so we can multiply that times 60, and we come up with 24 seconds. So these are looking pretty good. And finally, if you're really lazy, you can get a CX2 calculator that does all this flight planning for you. So we can go turn you on, go to flight, flight planning, we're going to hit 4. Leg time, 4. Distance, 7 miles. We'll hit enter. Ground speed, 78. Enter. A duration of 5 minutes and 23 seconds. So I think we should go with 5 minutes and 23 seconds. So let's go ahead and write that in here. Estimated time in route, 5 minutes, 23 seconds. So to determine how much fuel we're going to burn here, there's a couple of ways we can do this also. We can get our POH in, and we can say, well, what do we have? We've got 7 miles. We can look over here at 7 miles, right in here. And again, this is at full load, so we're going to be less than that. And so we can say gallons between 0.9 and 1.2. We can take a guess doing that way. We could also use the time. Let's use 5.4. That's what we calculated on the E6B. So we can go to 5.4 right in here. Pretty much the same. So that's one way to do it. And using the trusty E6B, we can see it says set gallons per hour over our pointer. So I've already done that. We have 7, 8, so this 7.5 gallons per hour over the pointer. And now it says we have total gallons over time. So let's find our time. And we come here to 50, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. That's our 5 minutes and 23 seconds. And we come up here and we see it looks like 0.7. So it could be 6.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. 0.6 or 0.7? Let's go with 0.7. So this is telling us that we are going to use 0.67 gallons on this leg. And of course, the other way to do that is with the calculator. So we're going to take our 5.4 using the E6B figure and divide that by the 7.5. And we come up with 0.72. So the calculator here says we're going to use 0.72 gallons on this first leg here.
And of course, the lazy way is to get our flight computer out. And we have our time here of 5 minutes 23 seconds. And the rate, 7.5 gallons per hour. We hit enter. And this leg is going to burn 0.7 gallons of fuel. I'm going to be a bit conservative here because I like to err on the safe side and go with the higher number. And I'm going to use 0.72. So 0.72 gallons we are going to use for this first leg on our flight from Calusa to the Williams Vortac. And now that leaves us with estimated time of arrival. So what we would do here is we would put the time we departed and then just keep adding this time. So if it was 12 noon that we left, then it would be 12.05 would be the estimated time of arrival. And so on. I'm not going to bother with doing that. That's just simple math and I'll leave that to you guys to figure out. So just in case you haven't noticed, there's a lot of well, guesswork in this. It's very difficult to get these readings just right on the E6B and then calculating here, deciding what to use. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make as a pilot when you're doing this. So these are really educated guesses. And you'll notice over here we have estimated time and route and actual time and route. These are the things you're going to want to pay attention to when you're really flying. If you're off, then you're going to have to do some recalculating while you're flying. This was never meant to be etched in stone what you have to do. This is just helping you with the flight. And when you are missing your times or the distance, it's time to recalculate. So I think that's it for part four the updated version. We've covered a lot of ground and used a lot of stuff. We got to use the pilot handbook. We got to use the E6B. We got to use a calculator and of course a flight computer that you can get. These are pretty cool tools. So that's it for part four. If you like this please click the like button. If you have a question or want to leave a comment that would be great. Thank you so much for watching and God bless.